In this video, we're going to take a look at finding probabilities for the normal distribution. For an A-level maths, you're expected to calculate probabilities for the normal distribution by using your calculator. We do this by using the NCD function on our calculator. So on my calculator, to get to that point, we click distribution. We click distribution, which is shortened to DIST. Then we click norm here for the normal distribution. And then finally, NCD. And this here is under the assumption that you're working in stats mode on your calculator. So once you get to this point now, it's going to ask for a few different things. So the first thing that it will ask for here, the type of data that we're working with. In this case here, working with a variable rather than a list. So you choose variable. Next, it will ask for the lower and upper. So we've got lower here. and upper. So what you choose here for lower and upper depends on the context of the question. So we'll take a look in a moment how that changes. And then we also need sigma here, our standard deviation, and mu for our mean. Okay, and again, they'll be given to you in the question. So let's take a look now at how we choose um, our lower and upper value here. So let's say we've got a random verbal x. Let's do this underneath. Let's say we've got x here which follows a normal distribution. We've got a mean here of mu, our variance of sigma squared. Okay. So in this case, now let's say that we're taking a look now at finding. The first one here is finding the probability that x is less than, so less than, or we can have less than or equal to a value here, say a. Okay. Now for the normal distribution here, because the normal distribution is a continuous distribution, it doesn't matter whether this is x being less than or less than or equal to, we can use those interchangeably. So that doesn't matter for the context of the questions here. So like I said, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm just gonna choose both of them here just so you can see a full definition. So what we do here is we set lower. We set lower here to an arbitrarily small value. So we set lower as small value. So you might be wondering here what in this context we define as a small value. And for me here, what I do is I choose minus nine, 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 for example, just a load of um, minus nines here. So that's my arbitrarily small value. And then we set upper here. And we set upper. as a in this context. So a here, just what we set for the upper value. Okay, and obviously, sigma and mu, they're from the question. Obviously, we were using this distribution here, then sigma would be the square root of our variance here, giving us sigma, and the mean here would also be mu as well. Okay, so what about now if we're finding, so now we're finding the probability that x, our random variable, is greater than or greater than or equal to a. Well, in this case now, we set the upper here. We set the upper value. Set the upper value as an arbitrarily large value this time. So let's just say we set this up now as a large value. And again, you might be asking the question now, in this context, what do we define as a large value? Well, I just choose now a load of positive nine. So nine, 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 for example, something like that would be absolutely fine. And in this case, then um, we now set lower as a here. So set lower as a here. Okay. And obviously again, Sigma, given in the context of the question um, from your distribution, and the same is true for mu there, the mean as well. Okay. And then finally, the last one here to consider now is when we're finding, we're finding the probability here of our random variable x being between two given values. So for example, for random variable x here being between a and b for example or 
we could change the inequalities here to be the probability of being between A and B again, but also including A and B. Okay. Like we said before, it doesn't matter. We can use these interchangeably here, um, but just so you can see the full definition. So what we do here now is we set lower as A, my upper as B. So we'll set lower as A, set lower as A, and upper as B. Okay. And like you see, that's probably the most straightforward of the three different types here. You just literally put A as your lower value and then B as your upper value. Okay. And there we have it. So that's everything that we need there now for our introduction here to finding probabilities for the normal distribution. And then let's just take a look at a couple of practice questions here to find in probabilities for the normal distribution. Starting off here with question one then, we've been given the random variable x which follows a normal distribution with a mean of 24 and a variance of 6. So here we're asked to find three probabilities, so let's begin with part a. So for part a then, we're asked to find the probability that x of a random variable x is greater than or equal to 25. Let's just write that down to begin with. So just using our calculator here, we need a lower and an upper value. So a lower and an upper value here. And just remember for the lower and upper value, that's determined here by the inequality. With this now being greater than or equal to, in this case, my lower value here would be this value here, 25. And the upper value now would be an arbitrarily large value. In this case here, I just insert a load of nines like so okay we also now need um the standard deviation here sigma and we also need mu here for the mean so for the standard deviation then that would be the square root of six here because this six now is the variance the square root of six and then for the mean here that would be 24. all you need to do now is just enter this here into your calculator and what you should find then for the probability here that x is greater than or equal to 25. Um, if we just round this say to three significant figures, then I'm going to get 0 0.342. So 0 0.3 over 2 there. Okay, that's the solution to A. Taking a look now at B here. We're looking here for the probability that x is less than 20. So again, just using our calculator here. We now need a lower and upper value. Lower and an upper value, as well as sigma here, our standard deviation, and mu here for the mean. So obviously in this case here, sigma and mu won't change, so that'll be the square root of 6. And then for mu here, the mean, that would still be 24. But what will change here now is the lower and upper. So again, just looking at the inequality here, it's now less than. So in this case here now, our lower value would be an arbitrarily small value. So I'm just going to do minus 9 and then 9. Load of 9s there basically. And then for the upper here, this would be this value here at 20. And again, just um, enter these now into your calculator here. And again, if I just randomly say to three significant figures here, I'm going to get not. 0.0512 there. Okay, so 0 0.0512 giving us a solution to B. And then finally, we take a look now at C here. We're looking for the probability that X is between 19 and 24. So in this case here, nice and straightforward now. My lower value would be this 19 here. My upper value. would be this 24 here. And then again, sigma here, our standard deviation, and mu for the mean, they won't change. So that's going to be the square root of 6, and that would be 24 there. Okay. And again, just enter these here into your calculator. And what you should find then for this probability here is this is not 0.479 there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the solution to C there. And that gives us the solution to question 1. And then finally here we take a look now at the very last question here. Question 2, we've got the amount of soda x milliliters in a can. 
that's produced by a certain manufacturer and that's modeled as a normal distribution here. So we've got two parts here, so let's begin with part A. We're asked to find the probability that a can chosen at random has less than 350 milliliters. So let's just start here with this distribution. So X follows a normal distribution. We have a mean of 330. Our variance here is 9 squared. So what we need to do here in this context is almost decode this sentence here. So what I want is just to find a basic probability. So let's find the probability that a can chosen at random has less than 350 milliliters. So X here is the amount of soda in a can. So if we're looking for now a can here being chosen at random, which has less than 315, what I'm looking for here is the probability that X here, the amount of soda in milliliters, being less than 315. Okay. That's what we need to do here. So we need to translate this sentence here now into a basic probability like this. So to find this probability here now, all we do is we use our calculator here. So we now need a lower value. We need an upper value. As well as our standard deviation here, sigma. And the mean here of mu. So for the lower in this case now, because we're looking for less than, that means the lower now would be um, an arbitrarily small value. So minus 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, and so on, like so. And then for the upper value here, well, we use this value here of 315. Like so. And then for the standard deviation here, sigma, well, we get that from the question here. So the variance is 9 squared. That means now that sigma here would be the square root of that. So that would just simply be 9. And then for the mean here, that would be 330. Like so. So now, just enter this here into your calculator. And what you should find then for the probability here of x being less than 315 is we get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0.478 here. Okay, so we get 0, 0, 0.0478. Um, rounding that now to three significant figures there. So now let's take a look at B here, and it will follow in a pretty similar way, um, just asking for something slightly different now. So for B then, we're asked to find the probability that a can, chosen at random, has more than 340 milliliters. So again, just translating this sentence here now into a basic probability like this. So we're now looking for the probability of X being greater than 340. So again, just using our calculator here. We now need a lower value. We need an upper value. And obviously, sigma and mu here won't change. So we can choose those straight away. So sigma is 9, and mu is 330. Okay. In this case here now, because we're looking for this probability here of our random variable x being greater than, that means the lower value here would be this value here, 340, so 340 there. And then for the upper value, we choose an arbitrarily large value. So we place a load of nines there, like so. So now all we do here is just enter this into our calculator here. And then for this probability, if you enter all these in correctly here, what you should find then for this probability is we get 0 0.1333 there. Again, just the three significant figures. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the solution to A, that's the solution to B, and that gives us the solution there to question two. So that actually brings to the end of this video on finding probabilities for the normal distribution. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the inverse normal distribution function.